Good morning YouTube. Today's project is going to be a timing belt replacement on a 2005 Subaru Outback. It's going to be the same for all single overhead cam motors. Uh, this will save you probably close to a thousand dollars in it yourself versus going to a dealer to have it done. So try to use some of the tips in this video and get it done yourself. As always, if there's any questions or anything I missed, leave it down in the comment section below and I will do my best to answer any questions you guys have. So let's get started. First thing you need to do is remove the radiator. So obviously we're gonna have to drain the coolant on this thing. To drain the coolant, you pull out this bottom uh, drain on the radiator, this black screw right here. The Phillips screw, so it's on the bottom passenger side of the car so there's the fog light on the passenger side just right in there make sure you remove the radiator cap or none of the coolant will actually drain out of the car well we have that coolant draining we can go ahead and remove a few other things we need to pull this little intake duct off with these two clips here honestly you don't need any tools for that just Pop those off your fingers. So pull those off. We can pull this bracket off for the hood prop and go ahead and take off the top radiator hose and this uh, belt cover. We can also now remove these two radiator support, or the radiator mounts. It's a 12 millimeter socket. Next step is to disconnect the fans on each side. So there's one of these wiring plugins on each side of the radiator. Uh, just go ahead and disconnect those. Now we can remove the bottom radiator hose. It's the same concept as taking the top one off. Just grab some pliers and take off that clamp and disconnect it just from the thermostat side. You can leave it on the radiator side. There's still gonna be quite a bit of coolant in the radiator, so make sure you put a bucket under the hose when you pop it off the thermostat. Alrighty guys, it's time to pull off the radiator. If you got everything disconnected and all the wiring off, it should pull up and out of the car very simply. The next step is to remove all the accessory belts. So the power steering pump belt and the AC belt. Power steering is fairly simple. All we have to do is loosen up this mount here for the alternator. There's a bolt here, a pinch bolt that tightens the tensioner. And then we just drop this bolt down. That'll drop the alternator, loosen the alternator up and that bolt to come off. So let's get that done. And as for the AC belt, you can. there's like two different ways you can do it. You can either loosen up this, this nut down here on the pulley and pull the tensioner up, or you can just take the whole bracket off. You have to take the whole bracket off anyway, so I'm just gonna go that route. Now this next step is probably the most challenging step of them all. Uh, we gotta figure out how to get the crank pulley off. It's a very tight bolt. I believe that bolt's uh, torqued to 130 foot pounds. So what I usually do is grab a super long extension bar and it's a 22 millimeter socket. So I'll put the socket on and grab the breaker bar and set it against I either like the frame rail or the ground and just turn the motor over and that'll be enough every single time to pop that crank pulley loose.
Now from here we just need to remove all of the bolts holding on the, so there's the timing cover, the outer timing cover, cover here, and then, or the, I guess it'd be considered inner. And then just this outer little cover here. So let's pull off all the bolts for the for both covers and you'll be exposed to the tightening belt. So there's a total of 11 bolts on the big cover and on the small outer cover, the access cover, there's uh, three bolts holding that one on. So from here, I'll throw back in the crank pulley bolt and then I'll spin the engine over until it's at top dead center. And I will show you how I know it's at top dead center. So I hope you can see this line. So it's on the inner. Oh man, it's good to focus good here. So it's on that crank pull or the crank sprocket down there. And then it lines up with that marking right there. So when that's at, when those line up and the cams line up, so this, the cam marking goes straight, lines up with that line there and on the driver's side that line lines up there so that's how we know it's that top dead center from here we're gonna go ahead and remove this bottom pulley that all the pulleys on this motor are 14 millimeter uh, heads so 14 millimeter socket will pull it off so let's go ahead and remove that bottom pulley Now from here we can remove the tensioner itself. Let's bring the camera over to the side. So this here is the tensioner. Once again, it's a 14 millimeter socket. Now that we have that removed, we need to pull off this guide for the the crank pulley or the crank sprocket guide. So that is the 10 millimeter socket. we can pull off the timing belt. So you can simply just go ahead, pull off that uh, pulley and replace it. Just get the bolt snug. We're gonna be talking those down later. And also this one down here. You can hear, you can hear that thing, it's pretty noisy. From here we can install the tensioner. Obviously don't pull the pin yet on the tensioner, but we can just thread the bolt in to the motor. All right guys, we are ready to install the timing belt. So there's three markings on this timing belt. The far right one goes to the driver's side cam middle one goes to the crank and the left the far left side goes to the passenger side cam and all these yellow lines here they line up with the line on the on the cam sprocket so this yellow line will sit right in between here and this this mark here, the yellow line on the tightening belt and this marking on the cam sprocket should all line up. 
on this cam, the posture set cam, and on this crank, the yellow line, and that marking on the sprocket, and you line up with this marking on the motor. So as you guys can see, it's, it's a little tight. So I'm gonna pull off this tensioner. So what I'm gonna do with these cam sprockets, I'm gonna get the yellow mark lined up. And I'm just gonna take a clamp like this and clamp it on there so it doesn't slide around at all. And then for the crank sprocket, there's this guide that we gotta get on, and that'll hold the belt in place on the sprocket. So now that we got the belt on, we can install the tensioner. And the last pulley we gotta put on is that bottom pulley. I always save the bottom, bottom pulley for last because it's easiest to get on. It's a lot easier to get this bottom pulley on than it is the tension. Now that we got the belt on, all the tensioners on, we can pull off these clamps we got on the on the sprockets. And before we do anything, we gotta make sure the belt hasn't slipped at all. So, line on the sprocket, line on the belt, and line on the motor. All line up perfect. Line on the sprocket, line on the belt, line on the motor, perfect. Line on the sprocket, line on the belt, line on the motor. So this is perfect. Now, tensioner pin, we can pull that out. And that tensioner won't drop until we turn the motor over. So just grab your 22 millimeter socket and ratchet and spin the motor over. I usually spin the motor over a time or two, and then I'll check all the timing marks again. These lines on the belt will probably never line up again. Maybe like every thousand revolutions or something they'll line up. But for now, we, we just check the line on the sprocket to the motor. As you guys can see, everything is perfect. So there's two things we need to do before we put the timing cover back on. First thing is to set the distance of this guide to the belt. So when you buy a kit, it includes this little plastic thing here. And all you do is loosen up these bolts. Slide that little plastic in there, press down on the guide and tighten up the bolts. Go ahead and pull out the plastic guide. Now the next thing we need to do is torque all of the tensioners or the pulleys. So the three pulleys and the tensioner bolt, this one here, all go to 29 foot pounds. 
So grab your torque wrench, throw on the 14 millimeter socket, and torque those to 29 foot pounds. From here on out, it's just the reverse of pulling everything off. So we're gonna throw back on the timing covers. All those, the see there's a total of 14 bolts. All those just get tightened up snug. I don't torque them to any spec. And then we gotta throw back on the crank pulley, which is torqued to 130 foot pounds. So for that, what you're gonna wanna do is throw, throw the car in like fifth gear, throw on the e-brake and have someone hit the brake. The, the actual brake itself, and you can torque that with a torque wrench to 130, 130 foot pounds. Let me make sure it's 130, hold up. So yes, it is 130 foot pounds. So tighten that to, or torque it to 130 foot pounds with your torque wrench. And then you can install, let's see what's next. The belts with the tensioner for the AC, and then you need to tighten up the, the power steering belt with the alternator. All those belts, just I'm not exactly sure of the, the actual spec of movement they need to be. I just tighten them to where they're snug. And if they're making noise, then you probably should tighten them a little more. I know it's probably not the most technical way to do it, but that's just how I've always done it. And then after that, you can throw back on the radiator, radiator hoses. I do a mixture of 50-50 coolant to water in the, in the radiator, so 50 percent antifreeze, 50% water. And then you can throw back on like the, the radiator supports and the intake duct and the belt, and the belt, AC belt uh, cover, whatever it's called. So if you made it this far, congratulations. You just saved yourself probably thousand dollars doing this, doing this at home yourself. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. As I mentioned earlier, I will do my best to answer any questions you guys have. Maybe I missed something and you guys have a question about something, just leave it in the comment section below. I'll get back to you guys, or feel free to shoot me, shoot me a message. Uh, if you thought this video was helpful at all, please give it a thumbs up. It'll help the channel immensely. Thanks for the sub subscribers, by the way. We just hit 1,600 and feel free to subscribe if you enjoy the content thank you for watching guys and i will see you in the next video